Thank you, everybody. Um, I think we should have a bigger room for the crowd. Uh, but I appreciate everybody coming out after, after lunch and joining. Uh, my name is Jim Stratton. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Workday. For those that don't, aren't familiar with Workday, we build uh, and serve enterprise grade finance and HR software. We're a cloud native company that started about 16 years ago uh, now, and, and we're serving a lot of the largest, most complex global customers on the planet. So what I wanted to talk about today, as, as it says, is how we're using AI and machine learning to enable our customers to navigate really in the crazy environment that, that we're all living in. So I, I think at this point it goes without saying that really the pace and the scope of change that we're all seeing isn't, isn't really slowing down at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, if anything, it seems to be increasing really. So if you think about kind of the global macroeconomic environment that we're in right now, geopolitics, the uh, changes in the, in the workforce labor market, as, as we overlay those changes on top of, on top of this changing environment that we're in, it's increasingly difficult for companies to navigate through that. And so the way that we're focusing on it is, is really empowering those companies to be able to, to navigate faster as they're dealing with, again, changes to the labor market, the changing nature of the workforce as we're going from mostly in office to mostly remote to now return to office or some version of hybrid of that as the workforce is changing from largely salary or hourly workers to largely contingent workers. How do businesses really get through that and navigate that and focus on their differentiators against their competition to really succeed as a business? We believe that ML and AI are really key to, to enabling that. So the way we think about it is really at the top level, we'll go into these, these three different categories in a minute, but at the very top level, we think about it in two distinct ways. One is a very employee-centric way. Uh, we tend to operate and, and succeed in industries that are very people-centric. They're, they're people with the greatest assets, they're the, the ones that are running the business, making the business great. Those tend to be the, the customers that we partner best with at Workday. And so we'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute. And then the other lens that we focus on is really around the business operations side of things. How do we make business more efficient at what they're doing, but also while reducing the overall risk of operating that business. So those are really the, the two primary lenses that, that we think about it in. And then I'll talk through each of these categories in, in a bit more detail as we go through. So starting first with the, the user experience side of things, we again, we split this really into two different views the way we think about it. First and foremost is user experience, just good, plain old UX. And, and if you think about it, we've all gotten very used to commercial grade, consumer grade UX. Starting with your phone and all the apps on your phone is just a base level of usability that we all expect. We expect it in our phones, we expect it in our apps, we expect it on our TVs, we expect it in our cars, we expect it checking into the hotel here, which almost worked out well. Keep it up in gym, you're on the right track. Um, but we expect that everywhere, and that, that's no different in our workplace applications as well. So that consumer grade UX, the enterprise, enterprise grade applications, is, is a primary focus for us. The other way that we think about it from a user perspective is in really enhancing the individual in their work. So up-leveling that individual, understanding who they are, what they're trying to do, where they're trying to go in their career, and then enabling opportunities for them to understand what are other opportunities within my work, what are other opportunities out in the broader marketplace, delivering learning content based on that, mentor recommendations, things like that. So helping a, helping a person enhance their own career and enhance where they're going within their career. And all of that is, is all backed by, by AI and ML. Um, it's really about that, again, those people-centric businesses. How do we get the maximum value for an individual within their experience within that, within that people-centric business? Okay, so switching over to more the business side, business operations side of it, the, the first primary area where 
important focus is, is really around process automation. So there is still a whole lot of tedious work that happens in, in back office applications, and a lot of that really can be automated. Um, so a good example of that is, is a product that we have called Journal Insights that looks at individual accounting transactions within the, within the ledger for a company, and it scores those. It looks at, at past history, and it develops a risk score for those so that we can highlight anomalous looking uh, accounting details and surface those up to the finance team to allow them to focus on the highest priority, the highest risk items, and eliminate a lot of the rubber stamp tedious work that they've been doing in the past. The exact same uh, type of modeling applies to uh, expense, expense receipts, uh, looking for anomalous, uh, anomalous entries on expense receipts, and there are loads of applications across the, across the finance and HR space that those processes can be very easily automated with, with ML-based models. Okay, the next thing, the next piece I want to talk about is really, again, this comes back to enhancing users. We're doing a lot to build machine learning applications that put better data and better uh, recommendations in front of users. We're not trying to take the user out of it. We're not trying to take the, the end worker out of the, the decision loop. This isn't one that we're actually automating all the way. We're trying to put better recommendations in those users' hands. So things like uh, things like suggested jobs for a candidate. What again? Knowing my skills, knowing what I'm doing, knowing where I'm going, recommending open positions that are there for those candidates. Likewise, for recruiters, recommending candidates based on the skills that we can infer off of resumes or, or that they put directly into the application. Those kinds of, again, those kinds of uh, insights that we can hand directly to the end users really enhance their own ability to make them more efficient at the work that they're doing. So those are the way that we think about the, the uh, AI problems and, and how we're enabling customers directly to, to improve their business. We started our, our path of developing AI about six or seven years ago, and, and in those early days, it took us about 18 months to go from idea inception all the way out to production and delivery. We're basically doing full stack of all the data ingestion, model building, feature, feature, uh, feature development, model delivery, deployment, get it all the way out to production, start serving it. And that was really all before customers gave us any feedback about how it was doing. We didn't really even know if we were building the right applications at the time. Now we're at a point where that whole, that whole process actually just takes a few weeks for us. So right now we have more than 30 ML-based applications out in our product suite. It's really across the, the breadth of the full HR and finance suite that we have. And the way that we've been able to do that now is by taking a platform approach to our own ML development. So all of that back-end work of data pipelines, feature development, curation, metrics, feedback loops, deployment to production, the, the full cycle of that is really done at the platform level now. And what that's allowed us to do is build these higher level constructs, building blocks basically, that allow our application development teams to much more quickly, much more quickly develop ML-based applications. And, and the way, coming back to the way we started again, it was really a central machine learning development team that was building all of these end-to-end -end applications in the past. And now where we are is we actually put in all tools, these building blocks, like I said, which I'll describe uh, in, in a little bit more detail in just a minute. We put those directly into the hands of now our application developers who are much more end business user facing. They understand what the customers are trying to do. They understand what the individuals are trying to do much more than an ML developer. So a good example of that is document understanding. So one of the first applications that we built, actually one of the first ML applications that we built was expense receipt OCR. So taking your expense receipt from dinner last night, taking a photo of your phone, doing the OCR on that, pulling off the individual business objects that were part of that, and ma matching those to, to uh, objects within the Workday application. That was one of the first things that we built, and it was a full stack and then the whole thing. What we've done now is abstracted that away 
to a, a service that we call document understanding, which can do that generically for, or enables the application developers to do this generically for invoices, for example. You know, it can scan in an invoice, link that directly to the financial business objects that are in there. Uh, and, and we can do that across other document types, resumes, statements of work, contracts, as a generic building block that, that our application developers can use. And we've also delivered those now by way of, actually it's, it's worth noting, they can also ensemble those together and add uh, anomaly detection on expense receipts or on invoices or, or on uh, uh, any other transaction like that. And we've exposed those first and foremost for our application developers as APIs. So they're just calling APIs uh, and, and extending those in the application space. This also allows us now to extend that out beyond the internal Workday developer and out to the broader Workday developer ecosystem. So our SI partners, our uh, customer, actual customer developers as well, and uh, eventually the ISPs as well. So developing with those ML building blocks, your own customer application on the Workday platform. So that's really, really where we're going with all of this, where it's, where it's coming. And then I think actually just the, the last uh, point that I wanted to make, and I've heard this across a number of other talks uh, yesterday and today, we're, we're still really early days in, uh, in this whole space, ML, AI in general. We've been talking about it, we've been working on it for a long time, but it's still early days, and you can tell that it's still early days, and particularly in the enterprise. So we're really just getting to the beginnings of conversations around policy and regulation and things like that. And so that, that puts it back on us, puts it back on all of you as well, to put people first in this thought, to do this in an ethical, ethical way, the way I started to talk of, we're very people-centric in the way that we think and develop. And I think we all have to be to make sure that we're providing transparency and fairness in, in all of these uh, applications that we're developing. So uh, my, my one ask is of everybody is that we take that away from this conference. And it's on us really to do right by people in these applications that we're building. Okay, I think that's actually it for my prepared content. Um, and I think we're a little bit ahead, so if anybody has any questions, happy to field those. If not, can let you No questions. All right. Thank you, everybody.